So you had a magical first date with a girl and now you're ready to shower all the love and affection your heart can possibly pour into this woman. Hold on a second. What up guys, Dating Coach Harry Wilmington here. Welcome to Harry Dating Conversations where we talk about your love life, how to improve it, and how to get better with women. And so today we're talking about what happens when you go on a magical first date with a woman. Because there's this tendency that guys tend to have of, you know, we seek out trying to have a good date and we don't always for that chemistry. And when we finally do, it's oftentimes very surprising to you. You're like, I didn't, I couldn't believe I actually found somebody that I gel with. And you know what? This date went so well, I'm already set to throw in all my cards on this girl, give up everybody else and try to make it work with her. And we're going to talk today about why that magical first date may not be as magical for her as it is for you and how you should go about when these feelings start to come in of like, this girl is so great, I wanna do things, when you consciously know it's a little bit too early to feel or do those things. As always, this show is brought to you by Get Girls Academy, my exclusive program designed to help you attract, date, and keep the women you want. As a member, you'll gain access to proven strategies, insider tips, and bi-monthly group coaching sessions where we tackle your biggest questions live. Click the link in the description to learn more and join today. So there's a guy on Reddit that did a post called, how do you put the brakes on after a magical date to not be too overwhelming? And I guess he's getting the idea that him trying to do all this stuff for a girl he just met might very well overwhelm her and he doesn't wanna fall for that trap. So kudos to that guy for recognizing that. We're gonna go through what his date was, talk about it a bit, and then I'll give you my commentary, as well as some of the pushback that I got from people on this Reddit post when I commented what I told this guy. So this guy says he's 31, and he met a girl who was 30. They met on Hinge. He said, I just had a magical date the other day. We spent hours in the restaurant, laughed, had a great conversation, matching interest. We had plenty of phone calls prior as well, as it took a bit of time until we could get a time we were both available. So first off, you know, I, kudos for this guy for getting the date. A lot of guys that go on dating apps aren't able to turn that into a dating situation. I actually have a program within my Get Girls Academy called Smart Digital Dating that can teach you exactly how to do that. But suffice to say, so he met her and got her in person, which is great. I typically advise you guys though, not to spend an exorbitant amount of hours on that first date because you kind of want to really leave her wanting more. And you, the only way you're able to do that is if you keep the date relatively short. I say no more than 90 minutes. If things are going extremely well, maybe two hours tops, but ultimately you don't lose points for getting out early and leaving her thinking, man, I really want to see him again. That's the feeling you want to leave women with at the end of dates, but still he got the date. He did phone calls before. I don't typically do phone calls before I meet somebody from online, but still he was able to make it work out. So good for him. So then he says, I was a bit worried about, I guess what other people on Reddit said. So I was a bit worried about what you guys say sometimes, like don't delay meeting and so on as it can break expectations, but we were both what we expected. Well, I mean, obviously if you were talking to her on the phone, then that's not really delaying meeting because you're kind of technically sort of already meeting her. But yeah, on online dating, you typically want to try to get them on a date within like two or three days of matching with them. He says, that's what I found worked best for me. Your results may vary, but that's what I found worked. So then he says, now to my question, I just want to shower her with compliments and love and everything. But I feel like I also need to maintain my excitement and not overwhelm her. Well, I will say at this point, he's 31. So he's probably had enough dating failures in his past to recognize that if that was a pattern he previously did, then it's probably not the best thing for him to do if he wants better results. So he can already feel, okay, I'm about to start doing things I did before where I'm trying to compliment her all the time and buy her things and sacrifice my time and all this stuff. But he's knowing on some conscious, conscious level, he's able to get past his emotional feels and say, but I know, I know, I probably should not do that. And the guy that says that is a guy that recognizes he did that before and it didn't work. So yeah, in the beginning, just because you had a great time with a girl on a date and, and you guys had chemistry and a connection and there was talking and stuff like that, that doesn't mean that she is now completely deserving of all of your attention, all of your time, all of your love, all of your care, and all of your loyalty, all right? This is the thing where women need to build up to thinking that they're earning some of that stuff. And so when you just give it freely, 
without her having to do anything, that can actually make women more apprehensive about dating you. Because they're gonna be thinking, why am I getting all this stuff for free? He must have an angle. The only angle I know you have is that you wanna, you have all these feelings and you wanna be nice to her, but it doesn't really matter what you think the angle is that you're projecting, it matters what she's feeling. And if she's feeling like what you're projecting is manipulative or in some way indicative of trying to get something else out of her, then you wanna stop doing those kinds of things. So, so he recognizes that. He says, and this was no ordinary just a date. It was holding hands and kissing, and she was just open to everything where I wanted to show my affection. I'm talking from my point of view. So there's a few things I want to point out here, right? So to start off with, he's saying that this is no ordinary date. So for him, he's not used to going on dates where the woman wants to hold his hand and the woman wants to kiss him. And so to me, that's typically indicative of a guy who maybe he's trying a little too hard on these dates for those things to happen to where the women just get, you know, pull away. Like if you're a guy that's, you know, trying to do the keynote wing and touching her too soon and trying to kiss her, yeah, she's not going to be receptive to that. So maybe he found the balance this time where she was open to those things. But also, also, he says that she was open to it and he's talking from his point of view. There are some times where you're going to date with a woman and you might be trying to do these things and on the surface, she's looking open to it. She's not like fighting back, but maybe she's one of those women that doesn't want to say things because she doesn't want to rock the boat or hurt her feelings. Now, I saw some of the comments later down the line where they were already able to set up a second date. So suffice to say, that's why I tell you guys, either way, it's good for you that you go for these moves, but you got to be mindful that you got to be looking out really carefully because this could have been a situation where he did those things and maybe she wasn't overly receptive to it, which I'm always like, if they're not receptive to it early on, that's usually not the best sign in the world in the first place. So you always want to make the move. I'm just saying, he's saying from his point of view, he's feeling as though she was open to it and it was totally cool. And it very well could have been, but just always be mindful that you got to really read because, you know, if you go for a kiss and she kind of backs away a little bit, don't take that as, oh, I got to try harder. Like always be mindful of the signals you're getting from women. So in this case, the signals were positive because he, again, he's able to, he's been able to plan a second date already. But anyway, he says, what are your guys' tips to maintain yourself and to not get too overwhelming? As I want to keep being myself as I was before the date. And I've been to dates before, but none of them ever felt like this. Like, I canceled my date tomorrow with another girl, so I just want to be like, yo, my plan's canceled. Let's meet again. But I know it might be too much to be so forward too early. Well, this isn't a case where he's he's, he's uh, suggesting being too forward. It's suggesting that it's already time for me to give up all of my other plans and give up my lifestyle and make sacrifices to be able to appease this woman who I've gone on one date with, that I spent maybe three hours with, that I've already been able to analyze and determine is the absolute perfect girl for me because she held my hand and kissed me and talked to me nice. And those are things, by the way, that should be happening on a date. But on the women's side of things, they don't take you doing that to them as the end all be all, oh, this guy's 100% chosen me. They take it as intel. They take it as, oh, I'm seeing or feeling a budding interest starting to happen. But understand, women most of the time want to be in a love story. They want to be able to tell the story of like, I met this guy. We went out a few times. I had butterflies for him. We dated for a minute. I got to learn about him and I got to learn what makes him tick and laugh and he made me feel things and we did stuff. And then eventually I couldn't take it anymore. And I had to be like, so what's going on? Are we, are you, am I going to be your girl? Am I the only one you're going after? What are we? That's the story women want to tell. They don't get that story if you as the guy are already giving them the entire world after one date. And it's not to say that your feelings that you're having are wrong or that they're bad. You should be feeling the things you're feeling. We are biologically built to want to hook up with a lot of women. So in order to do that, our hormones make us feel things a lot faster for women in the hopes that we're going to procreate with them on a biological level, but like them and care for them and stuff like that. So we are already designed to quickly assess that we want to get with a girl. We're masking it as, oh, because I really love and care for her. Biologically, it's because you want to bang her and her have your kids, okay? But you have to recognize that because you are going to get fooled by your feelings and then think that she has those same feelings. So after a good date where he's holding hands and kissing her and talking about stuff that's similar, his brain's going to trick him into thinking, 
I already feel these things because all these things happen on this date. And since I'm feeling those things, she must be feeling those things too. And then guys lie to themselves because they think, and if she's not already feeling those things, then she's using me or we don't really have as much chemistry as I thought. And they think that she's completely out. When it takes women two to three months to solidify their feelings. He, she could have the exact same feelings and thoughts about this guy at the end of date one. But her emotional processing center is gonna be like, that's great, but now let's just see if we can keep that same feeling up for the next couple of months, and if the feeling is consistent enough, then yeah, we'll let him know that we wanna be the girlfriend. But most guys get tripped up because if the woman's not showing those signs, the guy thinks, but I'm already feeling the thing, so I gotta tell her and I gotta show her, and then they lose out, you know? And I've talked about this on the show before. So in, in terms of what he's going through, the fact that he's already canceling dates, he should not be canceling dates. Like, I know he feels as though this girl is already the one and he doesn't come across this every day, but also he was able to plan a date with another girl, which means there are, cons there are possibly other women out there that could also make him feel this way and maybe bring something different to the table. But he's not gonna know that if he has nothing to compare it to. If he just dates this one girl and is like, okay, she's my end all be all, so no other women. And I know sometimes guys feel a way about dating multiple women, but understand, he's gonna get a better read on this woman if he goes out with the other woman and realizes, you know what? Based on these two dates that I've had with these two different girls, the feelings I have for the first one are stronger, and this one over here is cool, but we didn't have a lot in common. Or, you know what? She's making me feel the same things this other girl did, and we have more in common. This is gonna be a better choice. But if you're a guy, because when I was 30, I was just getting to the point where I started getting more and more dates. So prior to that, I was not used to having more than one option, which would be the option in front of me. So if this option didn't work out, yeah, I'd feel like I gotta make it work because I'm gonna be screwed otherwise, and I'm not gonna be able to get other girls. Having dated for a while now, I know, okay, if this girl, she's great, we get along, but if it doesn't work out, I can get somebody else. I'm not lost for choice. Therefore, I now have the option to take my time and see which of these choices is gonna be better. And that's honestly the way that most women are thinking that men date because that's how they date. And they are not punishing people for doing that. But we as guys punish ourselves because we've been made to think, if I date more than one girl, it's a bad thing. And if I'm already feeling strong things for this one, it's not fair to her. She's thinking he doesn't owe me loyalty yet because we've only been on one date. So don't think you're gonna get punished or lambashed by a woman for wanting to see what other options you have out there. At the point that she starts to feel more things, then she'll bring to your attention, hey, are you seeing anybody else? Well, I'm not, and so I want us to be a thing. Until they bring that up, you are free to do what you want and not feel guilty about it. But so many guys are convinced that it's a bad thing. So he shouldn't have canceled the date, he should have still kept it, he should still keep whatever obligations he has and not sacrifice them for this woman. Because again, she's not gonna be turned on by that, you know? And so, in terms of not getting overwhelmed though, because a lot of guys, if they haven't dated for a while, they have that first date, it gives them all the butterflies, all the feels. You're thinking this woman is the one I've already met on this first date. But if you're listening to my stuff long enough, you know, okay, but Harry said, curtail that, bring it back a little bit because she's not there yet. And even if I think I'm feeling things, and if I think this could be the one, I know that Harry said that there needs some, there's some pacing that needs to happen in order to make sure that she effectively starts to fall for me in a natural way for her. So how do I stop being overwhelmed? So the response that I left, I said, first off, you should have kept the other day. I said, second, understand that everything you're feeling is not out of the ordinary because this is exactly what should be happening on dates. Yes, if you've gone on enough dates, you'll know the feelings, the wanting to bang our brains out, the, you guys having a connection and feeling all bubbly, those are natural feelings. It is not out of the ordinary unless you're a guy that hasn't dated a lot or hasn't had a lot of options up to this point. But that's what should be happening. Anyway, I said, and it's par for the course for women. Men tend to read any affection they get uh, as quote, amazing and special, but it's really not. You went on one date with one girl that decided after all the dates you've been on, this is the girl that wants to hold your hand and kiss you. Girls go on dates like that all the time. On average, any average to attractive looking woman can go out on two or three dates a week and at least one or two of those guys she might hold hands with, make out with, hook up with, do whatever. So this is not out of the ordinary for women because let's be, let's be real, most women are going on dates with guys that wanna do that stuff and are gonna try that stuff and sometimes she's gonna be open to it. So she's had way more chances of feeling things on dates to where that is not out of the ordinary. So you thinking this is a magical date because she touched me and held my hand, 
this is par for the course for most women. And so you got to understand, even though you're thinking that and you're projecting it, that's not her reality. And so you trying to mark this occasion as special and magical is not going to do anything for her feelings because this is what she normally deals with anyway. So then he's, I said, Anyway, understand that most men tend to catch feelings quickly, but most women need two to three months of dating before they actually decide on you as the boyfriend. And then I said, you know what? If you follow the tips I'm about to give you, you can get to the finish line. And these tips are tips that I go over uh, in more detail and in more scenarios in the Get Girls Academy, but they're ones that I've lived by since like my mid twenties that has gotten me far in terms of dating and relationships, as well as people that I've coached. And a lot of this stuff is also based on me having female friends that I've talked to that have told me that when guys do the opposite of this, they start to lose interest. So I, these are my seven things that I told him. I said, one, only ask to see her once a week. Number two, don't text excessively between dates. Women need time to miss you. Number three, don't, do not stop talking about your feelings. As I've said before on this show, women only care about your feelings once they've figured out their feelings for you. So you coming to them at date three, just so you know, I really like you and care for you and I can already see a future together. She does not care about that if she has not gotten there yet. And most guys can't wait until she gets there. So they think if I tell her, then she'll let me know because she should already be there because I feel things, she should feel things, not how it works. I said number four, don't ask her to be in a relationship. When she's ready around month three, she'll ask for it. Time and time again, the relationships I've gotten into were never the result of me coming to them and saying, hey, so what are we? Can we be in a relationship? It's always been, I'm consistent. I wait two to three months. And then like clockwork, Women of all types and of races and backgrounds and creeds and status levels come. Hey, so I'm just curious what's going on and are you seeing anybody else? And like it's it's ingrained in them to seek out commitment. So therefore, they it's better for them to come to you and they will if you just are patient and wait and just be consistent. I said uh, five. Don't bring up negative subjects. I said number six. Until she's the girlfriend, keep seeing other women. And then I said number seven. Above all else. Do not put this girl on a pedestal. You do not actually know her well enough to be putting her there after one date. That's just your excited libido talking. Yes, understand guys, your libido is really gonna lie to you and make you think that this girl is high above any other girl you've ever dated and that she's the absolute best and you need to be like bowing down to her. But that's not gonna get you laid and it's not gonna get you in a relationship. At least that's what I found. So I said all that. And that's all very true, right? But what I found is that I've, I've learned that when you point things out like that and women come across, because Reddit's a form, anybody can read it. I, find, I found that women reading about how they fall for guys from men, it sounds unbelievable. It sounds stupid. And hey, I'm a guy that when I first read this stuff and learned about this stuff, I was like, this makes no sense. Like, for example, why would I not text a girl if I want her to know that I like her? How is that going to allow me to convince her that she likes me? Come to find out, if you leave a girl alone, she'll convince herself. So that takes away a lot of the work that I got to do. But if I say that in a form, women think, no, that's not true. He needs to text and call me all the time or I'd be out of there. So some of the responses I got, <laughs> one woman said, wow, I couldn't disagree more with this list as a woman. I'm sure it applies to some women, but this is the exact opposite of what me and my girlfriends would want. So w whenever I hear this, I think to myself, if I were able to get her in person and just ask her one simple question, which is, from your last previous relationships, tell me about how you got into them. I can assure you the guys that she felt most strongly about weren't complimenting her all the time, weren't buying her the most expensive stuff, probably weren't texting her or calling her all the time. If anything, she was hoping that they would call and text more because when women want you, they want to hear from you, but they want it to be their idea that they want that to happen. If the guy is freely giving communication, I found more often than not, they're like, oh, he's texting too much. Oh my God, this is a lot and this is excessive. So I see things like this, comments like that. And I see things like um, this one person put, um, this is a list that the manosphere who has never dated or connected with an actual woman would come up with. And I was like, I mean, I guess so. I mean, the girls I'm dating, I told them that I do this stuff and they're like totally fine with it. Because what I said in this thing to one person was that women have better game than men do. Like, and I'm gonna do a whole show about the kind of game that women have that men are even are, are unaware of. But suffice to say, they typically have better game. They know how to get resources out of us. They know how to say things to make us feel a certain way, to make us wanna do the things that they want us to do. 
And so to think that you as a guy don't need game and need to just be your authentic self. I'm not ever saying lie to women or be inauthentic. I'm saying things like be patient. I'm saying things like, hey, maybe don't be around so much because she doesn't need all that attention. And people think that's game playing. That's man of talking points. It's stuff that if you're doing the opposite, you're going to lose. I've had that experience. Guys, I've coached has that experience. Women that I've talked to talk about the fact that, oh, uh, this, this guy wants to see me for the third time this week. I'm exhausted. Oh, my God. This guy keeps talking to me between dates and texting me nonstop. I'm exhausted. Oh, my God. Why does this guy have more feelings than I do? Oh, my God. This guy came to me after two dates and wants a relationship, and I'm still trying to figure it out. Oh, I went on a date, and this guy just kept talking about negative stuff. He's such a bummer. Oh, my God. This guy that I'm dating seems like a loser. Doesn't he have any other prospects? Like, I didn't make this stuff up. Girls of their own accord have told me this stuff and I've experienced this stuff from them that these are things they do not want. So if I point it out and they don't like it, that doesn't take away the fact that it still works, you know? But suffice to say, guys, yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, the date that you're going on that you think is so magical, let's say it feels magical to you. Don't let that fool you into thinking that it's now time for you to just give up all your cards to her and to not date anybody else and have all the feels. You still need to do your three months of due diligence on her because I can assure you, I've had times where like I've gone on the first or second date with a girl and thought, oh, this is the absolute end all be all. She's so great. And then by date five, I'm finding out things about her past. I'm seeing her attitude at certain restaurants towards waiters. I'm hearing her talk about previous relationships where she was the abuser. And you don't learn that after one or two good conversations. So keep in mind that while that date may feel magical to you, just take it and read it as a stepping stone towards getting to know her more and seeing if there's other positive signals there. Hopefully it'll work out for you, but don't assume that it's going to just because one date went really well. Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Harry Dating Convos. Don't forget to visit harrywilmington.com to download my free ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss. And while you're there, if you're ready to take things to the next level with your dating life, check out the Get Girls Academy membership program for exclusive strategies and live coaching. Go to harrywilmington.com to learn more and join today. Lastly, if you've got a question you'd like answered on one of these shows, leave a comment below or write me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.